Hello lovelies, uh, welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Tale Alimi. I am a tech entrepreneur and business strategist by day. My passion is to help people create an abundant life and I am currently creating my own abundant life. The goal of this channel is to share my thoughts on business, on faith, on fitness, on love uh, and on relationships which I believe are important in creating an abundant life. Now, this is the first of my series, which is about relationships, okay? So on Mondays, I share around about business, motivation, and mindset. And on Fridays, which is today when I'm recording this video, uh, I share about relationships, love, and faith, and things like that. So I'm starting my relationship series today. So please subscribe to the channel because this is going to be a series and uh, more uh, information is going to come in the coming uh, weeks. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in and for watching this video. So today I'm going to be spitting the tea. Now in the last couple of years, I've not been very open about my relationships because I mean, I was focusing on working as a business strategist and helping people to grow their business. So for me, that was the focus and that's part of me I put out there. But this year, I just felt inspired to sort of be an abundant life advocate and sort of share with people my experiences and believe me in concerning relationship I have a lot to share <laughs> I mean so today I'm going to be sharing a um, personal story basically and the title of this video is married and divorced under 30 okay so um, so basically about my, my story about getting married now I got married at 25 I remember when I got married at 25 I thought I was almost old like <laughs> I was just about to miss the old train and I just had to get on it and get married fast. And the reason I felt that, because you might be watching this video like, oh, 25 was old. Let me explain to you what happened. Now, I come from a family where, actually on my mother's side, people got, they got married averaging between 19 and 20. So you can imagine that kind of pressure, okay? In fact, my mom had a sister that got married at 15, you know? So I think my grandmother got married at 12. My mom got married at 19. So literally the kind of family where everyone got married early now but because of course i went to school i pursued an education i loved academics i was a bit of an ethical because my dad was very passionate about academics and encouraged us with academics so i was a bit of an ethical so i thought okay you know what i was really focused on my books of course when i got to university i started to date you know but i wasn't i was just dating like okay ah, let me even date finally you know because i spent the whole of my high school years just focusing on reading and getting good grades you know but at the same time when i got in university that's when i began to hear from my parents i said to my mom you have to marry you have to marry you know As things like that so i began to date with the consciousness of like finding a husband you'd be wondering what's the 19 year old guy girl trying to find a husband but believe me at that age i wasn't trying to date casually it's like if it's, if you're not going to marry me don't even bother dating me <laughs> but then that was my mindset and that was how i like was approaching dating like then time is going time is going like you know if you're not going to marry me don't you know date me. but at the same time i was really passionate about my academics i just wanted to read my book you know have fun and things like that and it dated a couple of guys nothing really came out of it but with that serious mindset I mean, if you don't want to marry me or if you don't fit my values please leave my life but at the same time, sometime in university, I got very close to God. You know, I began to take my relationship with God very seriously. So I then began to select the kind of guys I dated. Okay, so I remember I broke up with this amazing guy, but because we weren't kind of compatible in our religious beliefs, and I said, you know what, we can't date anymore, and all that. And I felt that this is not what God wanted me for, wanted for me. Okay, so but at the same time, um, so by the time I got out of university. Um, I just broke up with that guy and I just said, you know, I'm going to be serious with God uh, I'm going to further my education and, and that's what I did after university. But at the time we were leaving school, then the pressure was, you have to marry, you have to marry. Like, you know, like there was a timeline. I remember my friends used to come to my house and just say, oh God, you know, you'll be told about marriage now. You know the funny thing, can I tell you this truth? Yesterday I was meeting with my friend and I was saying to her, girl, you don't take this married thing seriously. I was laughing because I was like, this is me. This is what the pressure I was going through um, 14 years ago. And I was like, oh my God, I have to marry, you know, but see me now. Well, no, I wasn't putting pressure on her, but I was just saying to her that you want this thing. Why don't you take it seriously, you know? So, but that was the atmosphere around my upbringing and 
what I was going through or what you know the atmosphere I had and at the time I um, was done with school I got in a relationship with a guy who was also in quote a nice guy but he just didn't know what he wanted in life okay and you know but fortunately or fortunately because he was so nice you know my family liked him and so when I said I was going to break up with him there was a lot of you know a flack against me that how can you break up with this guy he's a blah 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 he has a certain profession that's prestigious how can you break up with him but i knew what i was going through i knew that the guy didn't know what he wanted one minute you know he wanted to be a dry cleaner the next minute he wanted to be he just wasn't really focused and i thought i mean do i want to submit my life to this person who doesn't seem to have or know what he wants and so that's how that relationship ended and then after the relationship, I wanted to go and further my education and do an MBA. But that's when the pressure came. And then there was a lot of talk around misses before masters. Like, why are you furthering your education when you're not married? Get married. So at that point, I had a goal. Find a man who was going to marry <laughs> and then go and do my MBA. So I'm going to fulfill all righteousness and marry and then go and do my MBA. So that was my plan. Unfortunately, that was a really bad plan. Okay, because it was for me, it wasn't about... Is this the kind of man I want to spend the rest of my life with? What I really want in a man, okay? Have I even built my sense of self-worth and self-esteem? It wasn't about all those things. It was about, man, let me fulfill this married thing, get it over with, and then focus on what I want to do. So that's how I kind of approached it. And I feel like that is how, why I, that's what I did wrong. Because you see, one of the things that I was listening to Bishop TDJ today, and he says that before you go to another marriage, you do an autopsy of your last marriage. And then for me, I think that that's where I went into marriage wrongly. So I wasn't choosing a partner based on, you know, values and love. Of course, I was ticking boxes. Okay, is he a Christian? Psh, you know, does he have, seem to know what he wants? Different from my last relationship? Psh. Uh, is it ambitious? Is he ambitious? Psh, okay. Is he good looking? Psh. You know, so I was choosing based on that, you know, and then he was quite persistent on my case. And I, when he came to meet me, I said, Come on, uncle, <laughs> this is marriage right now. I'm not like looking for a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. I was like, Good, let's get married. I was like, eh? You are in? So, I mean, we dated and we, we, we did our introduction six months into our dating. It was pam, pam, pam. You know, we got married a year into, you know, after we met, finished, you know, that's it because it was like, get married. So in my mind, I was like, okay, get married and do my MBA. So at the end of my first year of my MBA was when we got, we got married and I continued my MBA and I was so happy. I felt, I remember walking down that aisle, you know, he wasn't like, oh my God, I'm marrying the love of my life. He was like, oh gosh, thank you. I was crying, but I was crying tears of relief <laughs> that had finally won in this marriage, you know, thing and finally got in this marriage thing that was supposed to be a prize. I was supposed to define my life, okay? And that's why I was looking down the app. But then, even before we married, there were just a couple of signs that I won't lie to you, I saw, but I will say some. Number one, I didn't know how to interpret the signs, the red flags. And number two, even when I tried to raise it, you know, with female role models in my life right now, I was like, <sighs> Okay, so he's cheating. So what? I bet every man cheats. That's that why you're not marrying him. I bet marry him. So there were things like that. You know, I'm very, very careful. I don't want to talk about the other party because it really this is about me, about my decisions, about things you can learn from me and all that. So, but that's how the marriage worked. And from the first, um, from the first month of marriage, there were issues, you know, and issues around infidelity, issues around a lot of verbal abuse, a lot of emotional abuse and uh, it was horrible because i got married at 25 by 29 the marriage is over so i literally was married for less than four years because about three and a half years and all that and i was devastated because i thought this is not what i planned for my life you know because the truth is i'm a family oriented person i love family family is very important to me i have a close-knit family and myself and my siblings and my parents are really very close so it was devastating that i then i had a child was am i going to raise my son away from something that really mattered to me i was very important to me you know it was it broke my heart but you know what broke my heart the most the fact that i thought that if i had a failed marriage i was not going to fulfill purpose in life i thought oh god if i had a failed marriage then i was you know Everything that God had for me in this earth was over, you know, and it's shocking and amazing that that's how I felt. But truthfully, that's how I felt. I was misinformed, you know, and 
truthfully, I spent the next couple of years trying to get back to marriage, to get back to the prize, and so I can continue to fulfill purpose. Anyway, let me not get ahead of myself. That is for another day. So this that's why you have to stay tuned. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and stay tuned to this video because I'm going to continue to share what happened next afterwards. But that's, um, in short, my story. I was married and divorced under 30 abomination. <laughs> I know you're wondering what's the big deal, yeah, but I mean, guess what? I'm in Nigeria, my country is Nigeria. At that time, it was a big deal, you know? But I mean, now I see ladies in their 30s, I have friends in their mid or late 30s, or even 40s, and they're not married. And then I look back and say, What was I in a hurry for? I mean, at 24, <laughs> I'm rushing to marry, you know? But then for me, the lesson the lesson is marriage is a very important decision, okay? Um, if you're single and you're watching this video, um be, be sure about why you want to marry get married don't get married just because society expects you to do it do it because you know it is something that you believe that you've been called to it's something that you're ready to be committed to it's so, you found a partner okay who you're going to be able to do life and work in life with so those are some of the things that you need to consider in deciding um if you want to get married i'm going to share my my relationship um escapades afterwards in in the next couple of weeks but those are things you keep in mind and then if you've been married before like me and divorced i mean don't condemn yourself you know we make mistakes sometimes you do several businesses before you succeed at once so sometimes in life you don't get it right the first time in marriage don't condemn yourself and no guess what you can't fulfill purpose whether you've been divorced. I mean, look at my life. Look at me now and look at all that I've done. And if you don't know me, you can Google my name, Tale Alimi, and you would see that I've actually created an incredible life and made a lot of impact, even though I'm divorced. <laughs> so you can do the same too. So that is a short um, introduction to this relationship series. Tune in for the real tea <laughs> next week because I have a lot of tea to spill. So please subscribe to this channel. Please share this video with anyone who you know you need it. You need to and see you again next week. God bless you.